Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in today's video I want to give you a cheat sheet for your oral dermatology exam or any dermatological clinical round. In dermatology it is often easy to see a rash but quite difficult to put it into words, especially in a manner that another colleague understands what you are talking about. To make this description a little bit easier, I want to give you an 8 point list you can use for any rash. The first point is the location of the rash. Here you describe where you can see changes in the skin. Terms you can use are either very general descriptions, like on the arm or hands, feet, head and neck, etc. or also, for example, the rash is located on the extensor or flexor sites, or the rash is generalized if the entire skin is involved. The second point is the distribution of the rash. At first it sounds like it is pretty much the same as the location. But here you describe whether the rash is symmetrical or asymmetrical, for example if it is on both sides of the spine, or if it is like the typical butterfly rash in lupus. If you want to know more about lupus, you can click on the banner above. Also, you can describe if it is bilateral or unilateral, for example, if it is only found on one arm. In the next step, you will describe the color of the rash. Here you can use terms as hypopigmented or hyperpigmented, if you want to know more about hypo and hyperpigmentation disorders, you can click on the banner above. Also, you can describe a rash as erythematous when it appears reddish in color, or hemorrhagic when, it, when there is bleeding or capillary distension involved. Jaundice or icterus is a term to describe yellow discoloration of the skin and sclera due to high bilirubin levels. Also, you can describe whether the color is uniform, so monomorphic, or if the color varies between areas of the rash, then it is polymorphic. In the fourth step, we describe the configuration of the rash. Here we pay attention to the shape of the lesion or lesions if it is several. The lesion can be nominal, so shaped like a coin, Linear if it is running in a line along an area, or annular if it shapes a circle. Also, you can describe whether multiple lesions are next to each other in one field but not touching, or if they are aggregating to a large field. In the next step, we describe the specific rash group. Here, we pay attention to the elevation of the lesion and whether it is filled with a substance or if the skin is depressed. Here you should take a closer look at the lesions individually and decide whether you find it to be a macule or a papule. Perhaps it could also be a patch, nodule, cyst, plaque, a vesicle, pustule or bulla or an ulcer. I don't want to go too close into any of the subgroups, I rather want to organize the information into a clinical routine plan in this video specifically. In the sixth step, we describe the surface of the affected skin and see if it is scaling, if it is hyperkeratotic, verrucous, so warty, or if the surface presents with erosion. Also, we can find fissures, ulcers, and granulation tissue. In the seventh step, we describe the moisture of the affected skin. Generally, the skin can be either wet or dry, depending on the lesion. If it is wet, we can further differentiate if the fluid is serous or like pus or maybe hemorrhagic. In the last step of our description, we describe the area of the skin that is surrounding the rash. We describe the color of the skin, if the skin is intact and appears normal, or if the skin maybe presents with scratch marks from the itching rash. Also we feel for the lymph nodes in the affected area 
and see if those are swollen in response to the rash, as it could occupy a large area and cause inflammation, or perhaps there is even a super infection. So that's it for this video, I hope it was helpful, and please subscribe if you like our channel. Thank you very much.